What's going on, Dolphins? It's your boy, Dylan, and I got some pretty uh, big Dolphins news to talk to you about. Um, a couple uh, pretty big stories uh, out of the Dolphins organization that I want to get to um, that both continue to show how much of a mess this Dolphins organization is. One of the stories is their fault, you know, is their own doing. Uh, the other one is something uh, they couldn't control, but it's just unfortunate. But it just, you know, it adds to the overall, you know, big picture of how much of a mess uh, this season is and will be for the Dolphins. And it does actually have some, um, you know, direct implications as well. But before I get to that, there was a story that came out last night that I want to talk about just really fast. Um, and that's regarding... Uh, one of the NFL owners <clears throat> who has uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. So um, according to NFL.com or, you know, the from the NFL app, that's where I'm getting the story. Uh, the Saints owner, Saints owner Gail Benson tested positive for COVID-19. New Orleans Saints owner Gail Benson has tested positive for COVID-19. Benson, 73, was diagnosed with the novel coronavirus within the last few weeks, NFL Network's Mike Garofalo confirmed Friday. It is unknown what symptoms Benson, who also owns the NBA's New Orleans uh, Pelicans, has experienced. Ms. Benson did positive, uh, test positive for COVID-19, the Saints announced in a statement. She is progressing well and improving daily. She has not missed a daily work call with the Saints and Pelicans staff, nor has she missed uh, an NBA or NFL owner call in recent days. She was not hospitalized and is recovering at home in New Orleans. So thanks everyone for their thoughts and prayers. The Times Pic Picayune first reported the news. New Orleans coach Sean Payton was diagnosed with COVID-19 in March. The first NFL coach known to have contracted the virus. Several Saints players tested positive for the virus since training camp. Caden Ellis, Zach Wood, and Deontay Harris, but were believed to have been false positives after brief stays on the reserve COVID-19 list. All right, so real quick, there is a couple things that I do want to mention really fast. So, um, first of all, I want to note that <clears throat> the information regarding whether you can be reinfected, uh, as I've been saying for a little bit now, seems to be pointing more and more towards that you can be reinfected, which makes sense, honestly. Um, most notably, considering the fact that, like most viruses, it mutates. That's why we get the, you know, flu every year. The difference between the flu and this, besides the, you know, actual, uh, like, chemical and, and composition of the, the virus and what it actually does, um, you know, whatever, but uh, is that we actually have, like, vaccines and treatments for it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I do think that this one is probably a bit more contagious and deadly than the flu, just naturally. But aside from that, you know, we don't have things that can really combat it at this point. So, um, you know, and then when, you know, if you get it again, you know, it could unfortunately have even more serious side effects the second time around but additionally unfortunately the more and more that they study this thing the more they realize that uh it has long-term effects as i've talked about many times now to your heart your lungs uh your kidneys your brain all kinds of stuff pretty much your entire body right and so there was uh mo bamba i think is his name uh there was a center for, I can't remember which NBA team, but I told you guys about the story there about how uh, he ended up leaving uh, the NBA bubble because he needed uh, further, you know, evaluation and testing and stuff because he was, I guess, having, um, you know, lingering side effects from it. Additionally, I saw reports recently that Boris Johnson, uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, who also has caught uh, had caught coronavirus and has since recovered he was hospitalized he was in the ICU he had it pretty bad but he's actually going to be stepping down as prime minister within the next 6 months because of lingering coronavirus issues so this is not a joke by any stretch of the imagination and just because you get it and then it goes away doesn't mean that you're all good or that you're in the clear that's not even close to the case, right? And that's another difference between this and the flu is, is uh, the flu doesn't like irreparably damage you uh, 
you know, during the time you had it, that it will affect you after you've gotten rid of it, right? So in other words, it's not going to destroy your lungs or your brain or your heart so much and so severely that even after you get rid of it, you'll die from, you could potentially die from it, which has happened. There have been people, uh, there have been numerous cases where people have had it. Maybe they got sick or they didn't. They got rid of it, but then died later of something, uh, you know, that happened to them subsequently because of the virus right um anyway so uh we'll see what happens i mean as far as i'm concerned and people probably aren't gonna like this but all the nfl owners are racists and they're all pieces of shit so um and with the way that they're you know pushing and pushing and pushing for this nfl season to go on and with the way that they're risking the lives of fans and players etc i'm sorry but i really just don't um you know have much uh sympathy for her. like it kind of you know <laughs> i mean like it, you kind of deserve it if i'm if i'm being honest right and a lot of people will probably get all super upset but like you know, she doesn't care, obviously, about the fucking, the, the health and safety of, uh, you know, her players and staff and so on and so forth. Not enough to fucking cancel the season. Not enough to fucking maintain her profits. So, I mean, like I said, I, I'm not going to shed a tear over the fact that she got it. So, you know, and again, also, she's massively wealthy. So the likelihood of her dying from it even though she's actually more susceptible to it because she's older in her 70s is actually probably i don't know what the actual stati statistics are but less likely uh because she has the means to you know get treated and go to the best doctors and etc 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 right so because she has billions of dollars because she's a billionaire right so you know i mean whereas there are firm studies and statistics that show you know black people and and uh latinx people in this country are dying at far higher rates from it because they don't have the kind of access to health care like she does and and whatnot anyway moving past the disgusting saints owner who caught the coronavirus uh and serves her right um we are going to be moving on now to more dolphins related information uh and topics because there is some uh you know quarterback related news that is that is pretty important and and that we need to get to so just real quick uh miami dolphins quarterback ryan fitzpatrick left practice earlier after le learning that his mother passed away according to head coach brian flores so unfortunately his mother passed away i don't know how old she was or or really any information there is no real information here and what I'm looking at, and the, it's an article from um, uh, NFL.com from the NFL app, and it's talking about a lot of like injuries and stuff going on around the league uh, and things that have happened. Uh, so there's not a lot of information on any one particular thing. But he did leave. He had missed a day of practice recently. So this is the story that I was talking to you about that's, you know, obviously nobody's fault. Unfortunately, you know, his mother passed away. That's life. Uh, and so now he's going to spend some time away. I was seeing, though, that there is no, um, yeah, there is no time frame for his return to the team, Flora said. Uh, he had recently left camp to spend uh, some final moments with her. So that's obviously why he was gone before. Um, and look, you know, the regular season, our first game is still two weeks away, right? Uh, about two weeks away. So I don't know that he would be gone long enough, um, you know, to like miss the game. Like, I'm pretty sure that whatever you know he's obviously they're gonna make funeral arrangements and so on and so forth that usually can take a little bit of time to uh you know get together um likely there's not going to be much of an in-person thing uh just anyway because of the coronavirus um but i don't know i don't know how they're going to handle it obviously point is there's there's definitely a lot of things that could uh you know influence the situation so it is unknown how long he'll be gone 
I would say it's likely he'll probably be back to the team sometime before, you know, um, we actually have to play a game, but he is going to miss practice in the meantime. Now, what does that mean for the team? And, you know, could that potentially mean something for the first game? Sure. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I still think that there is probably a slight uh, likelihood that Ryan Fitzpatrick starts. But on the other hand, um, you know, there have been reports and I talked about this in a previous video recently about how Tua has been doing, you know, a, a lot better. And I compared it to like his, his, his injury, right? Like the reports are like over the top glowing and it's, I mean, maybe it's all true. Like, I'm not saying it's not, but like the way that people choose to frame it is pretty telling. Right. And so, um, but I don't know, like my fear is, is that they're going to end up putting him out in game one and the offensive line is not going to be anywhere close to ready. And he's going to, you know, uh, end up having to run for his life the whole time and get mauled because of it. Um, and potentially get hurt. I hope not, but there is that potential and he is injury prone. He's had multiple injuries and most notably to his lower extremities, which is not a good thing uh, for a player at his position and for his size, etc. So I do have concerns there. Um, we'll obviously have to wait and see how that plays out. But if he is continuing to improve and if he's, you know, doing as well as everybody is saying that he's doing, etc., etc., then um, especially with Fitzpatrick missing, let's say he misses all this week and that i mean what if, if he doesn't come back let's say potentially until like right before i mean if he misses the game obviously then somebody else is gonna have to go in i think it would likely be tua over josh rosen if i'm uh being honest i would be kind of a little surprised not hugely surprised but i would be a little surprised if they put rosen in over uh tua but there is that possibility um but yeah, I think the, the likelihood that two are, or obviously just one of the other quarterbacks uh, uh, going in game one increases. So um, in other words, there is a possibility that Ryan Fitzpatrick will not be the starting day quarterback, whether that ends up being Tua or even Rosen. We'll have to wait and see. That's obviously going to be a storyline for the Dolphins uh, developing and something to keep an eye on as we go forward. Um, okay. The last bit of, um, you know, news that I want to talk about is to me personally, um, I mean, like at this point, I have to be honest, like nothing really surprises me with them, but it, it's, it is one of those kinds of things that's like, it's surprising. It's like, why, why would you, why would you do that? Like, it just, to me, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And I'll explain why in just a second. So what are we actually talking about here? What happened? What did the Dolphins do, right? So they made a trade. Okay, interesting. Well, what was that trade? Who did they trade with? Well, the they traded with the Las Vegas Raiders. And they traded them. They gave them uh, linebacker Raekwon McMillan and... Uh, a fifth round pick from 2021 and we get a 2021 fourth round draft pick back so let's see the loss uh the las vegas raiders completed a trade for miami dolphins linebacker raekwon mcmillan on saturday according to espn's adam schefter the dolphins will send mcmillan a and a 2021 fifth round draft pick to the raiders for a 2021 fourth round pick. Dolphins head coach Brian Flores later confirmed the deal. The 24 year old McMillan was a second round pick of the Dolphins in the 2017 NFL draft out of Ohio State, and he has started 28 of the 29 games he has appeared in over the past two years. McMillan missed his entire rookie season in 2017 with a torn ACL, but it, it didn't take him long to seize the starting middle linebacker job in 2018. McMillan finished that season with 105 tackles, five tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery in 16 games. Pretty solid solid fucking stats especially considering he had the torn acl although mcmillan missed three games last season he still finished with a solid stat line as is as he recorded 72 tackles and three tackles for loss not to mention 
he was pretty much our entire run defense last year. Like, I hate this trade. It's a absolute garbage trade. He's worth a second round pick, at least a third round pick. I, I mean, they could have done worse. But when you give away pretty much your entire run defense from last year, a, a really good player, you they totally weakened that fucking linebacker room. I, I mean, you give him and a fifth round pick just to get a fourth. It, I mean, like, what are they doing? What the fuck are they doing? He was like literally their entire run game uh, defense last year. Run defense last year. And look, in the game against the Jaguars, I believe it was, they decided to hold him out, right? Even though they really could have used him because they needed to stop the run, they didn't. They decided to keep him on the inactives list or put him on the inactives list. And then like the very next week, they're like, oh, well, he's injured, even though he wasn't like on the injury report, if I remember correctly. And then all of a sudden they decide to put him on IR. They might have they might it might have they might have put him directly on IR actually for that game now that I'm thinking about it and, and not had him on the inactives list. I think that's what it was. I think they put him on IR right before the game. Uh anyway, whatever. Point is, like when he wasn't in there, the run game, the run defense was just like it just didn't exist. And when it did exist, it was because of him primarily. So they just got rid of their entire run game from last run defense from last year. Like Anyway, McMillan is set to enter the final year of his rookie contract in 2020, and Miami's decision to trade him suggests the organization was either unable or unwilling to sign him to an extension. And look, if they want to use cap uh, as an excuse, well, it's their own fucking fault for blowing through it, right? Like, I mean, nothing that they do makes any kind of fucking sense for the short term or the long term. Like, their their entire strategy and philosophy is a complete fucking disaster. It like, it, it just is. It just is. And I can't understand how anybody can like have confidence in the things that they're doing. Anyway, acquiring a talented linebacker who is just a few years removed from being a second round pick is a logical move on the Raiders part since it can be argued that linebacker is their weakest position on their roster. Uh, you know, and then they talk a little bit about the vague, uh, Raiders situation. I don't care. Meanwhile, the Dolphins will likely turn to some combination of 2018 third round pick Jerome Baker. Not to mention, him and Baker actually work really well together. Why? Because they played together for years. Uh... Not just with the Dolphins, but at Ohio State, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I think that's right. Like, I mean, so they lost some of their linebacker chemistry, uh, too, with, by by getting rid of him. Like, none of it makes any fucking sense. Uh, and free agent acquisitions, Landon Roberts and Kamu Gruger hill at their two inside linebacker spots. I mean... <sighs> What is wrong with these fucking people? Like, given the fact that Flores coached Roberts while he was a defensive coordinator with the New England Patriots, it stands to reason that he wanted to clear the way for more playing time for a player he is familiar with. Okay, and look, dude. For all those people that, like, bitched about Adam Gase doing that. Now, look, I'm a fair and rational person. So, when Adam Gase brought in Jay Cutler, I said back then that, it really was everything considered the best move and the best option available considering, most importantly, that they were not going to take Colin Kaepernick. I said that I would have brought in Colin Kaepernick uh, in that situation, but there is no way that was going to happen because Stephen Ross would not allow it because he, as is, or as are the other 31 NFL owners, they're all racist pieces of shit. So there's nowhere they were going to do that. And with, you know, his experience in the league, his familiarity with Gase and his systems, etc., 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 it made sense. It, he was really expensive, and there was that too. Uh, but on the options available, it was, you know, certainly up there. Um, and I couldn't, you know, fault him for it, most notably because they had, uh, you know, previous experience with each other, and that makes sense. So, but... 
it ended up being the wrong move um, because it didn't work out, right? But for all, and, and both of those things can be true at the same time. It could have been the best uh, decision given the circumstances and also be the wrong decision because of the fact that it didn't pan out um, in the long haul. Uh, now, but if you're going to give Adam Gay shit for bringing in guys that he likes and he's familiar with, then uh, if it doesn't work out, then the same thing must be said here. Like it just, why would you get rid of your entire fucking run defense from last year? Anyway, the Miami defense has undergone a significant transformation this offseason with the acquisition of Shaq Lawson, Roberts, Gruger Hill, uh, Kyle Van Noy and Byron Jones and shipping out McMillan two weeks before the start of season ensures that the Dolphins defense will have an even more of a different look in 2020. And again, just another piece from last year's team that's now gone too, right? So just like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this season, there's like literally nobody from last year's team because they're damn close to that. Like, super close. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens after cutdowns. It's going to be super fascinating to, to see what this Dolphins team looks like. The final, uh, you know, 53-man roster, whatever, um, after they do cutdowns, which is coming very soon. They only got about another week and a half or something like that of training camp. So, it won't be long before we find out what that is. And, uh... Anyway, I, I mean, it's just, they're just such a fucking mess. And I really, I don't understand how anybody looks at anything that they've done since fucking Jump Street when they, when, 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 uh, Ross fired Gase and brought in fucking Flores and everything they've done since then. But there are still tons of people confident that they're going in the right direction. Okay. I, I guess. I don't know what reality you guys live in, but it's... They literally are just a giant steaming pile of fucking shit. Like, they're in, they're a giant fucking mess. Hot garbage. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> that's what I got. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate the perspective. Even though it's... Look, people always get mad at me because I tell them the truth and the reality of the situation and they don't like the reality. Well, sorry, it's not my fault. Reality fucking sucks. Don't get mad at me and, you know, be like, oh, why are you being so negative? Well, bro, if reality wasn't so negative, I wouldn't tell you fucking that it's negative. Sorry, you can't fucking handle it. So whatever. But for those of you who appreciate my perspective, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell. If you want to get the alerts, share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.